Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University, and this is the second part of our series on modeling a jet plane. So, one thing I want to do is actually center these planes and go back and rearrange them so everything lines up for my reference materials. Let's just click on a plane, hit the Q to select and select one. And one thing you can do is come up here and right click on the um, translation button and you'll get a little dialog box here and if you just right click on each one of these spinners it'll bring it down to zero so I'm centering that let's go to the uh, center plane here click on that let's Q to get off and click on the center plane let's control R so I can select it don't seem to be able to select it there you go Q to get off of that there you go select that plane uh, right click on the translation and once again let's center that so that's centered and let's select the center one example and let's right click on the translation excuse me as Q to get off of that good X that out click on that plane uh, right click on translation and let's zero those out as well by right clicking on each one of those spinners so everything's zeroed out and I'm gonna move it around anyway but I just wanted to show you that trick anytime you right click on any one of these uh, tool uh, bar commands you get a dialog box you can set the spinners for that box okay let's come along here now and actually uh, rearrange this just a little bit. So I'm going to hit Alt-W to get back into my uh, uh, orth orthographic views. And I can see things just aren't lined up very well. So what I'm going to do is just begin moving things around. Uh, let's go ahead and just Control a to select everything. And let's uh, W, of course, and that's going to bring that up a little bit. There's my center plane right there. Of course, this plane right here needs to be brought up as well. So let's click on that. And the other one as well. Control click to select one, two. Let's bring those up. There we go. Once again, I just need to move things around to get them right. It's going to take me a little bit of manipulation here. If I centered everything well in GIMP or my Photoshop editor, things will be great. But if not, then I'm going to have to move things just around just a little bit to get the drawing right on. Uh, and I'm just going to go right to perspective view. So let's Control W. Excuse me, Alt W. Beg your pardon. And now let's go ahead and hit Q to get off everything. Click on this plane and let's hit the. Uh, W key to move back and let's move this back. Wrong one. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get on that plane right. Let's move it back. Good, good, good. And now let me click on the other plane to move it over. There we go. Things are starting to look pretty good. So I can see my front view, uh, my side view, and my top view. Let's control R to rotate around and see if we got everything lined up. And we see we don't quite have everything lined up. And let's Q to get off of that. Click on here. Hit the uh, W key to translate that green translate in there there we go got it right in there and uh, things are looking actually fairly good I want to click on here and just move this to the line this up just a little bit there we got the tail spins tail fins all lined up correctly let's control R to kind of rotate and get the top view very important that I get this view right here lined up looking pretty good nose to nose I'm pretty happy with that there we go okay that's great um, I'm gonna actually select all of these with a control A let me go ahead and get off of that Q, Control A. And now what I want to do, I want to freeze this so I actually don't get into, uh, uh, begin building my model and these planes start moving around. Hit Z to extend out. And the Control A, once again, makes you selected everything. And it's very important to understand that when you freeze something in 3ds Max, it turns it gray. So I want to turn that off so I'm not uh, turning it gray when I freeze it. I want it to remain nice and bright so I can see my reference materials object properties and we can see there's a checkbox that says show frozen in gray let's uncheck that we're okay and now we're ready to freeze it so let's right click and hit freeze selection so everything's frozen now uh, so I can't do anything to it and now we're ready to start building our jet plane so that was a lot of stuff just to get the reference material in here but let me promise you folks if you're trying to build a quality model you can't do without it well, after about 15 minutes of work, we're ready to start building our box model. I'm going to do it all in perspective view. And let's go ahead and then rotate this a little bit and expand it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit Control r for my arc rotate. Excuse me. There we go. And I'm going to hit Alt-Z to kind of zoom back a little bit. Cool. Or zoom in, excuse me. And let's arc rotate again. So come along here. And I'm going to lay a box right down over that plane. So let's go to um, Create and hit Box. And that's just raw box. Okay. And there we go. Now uh, I've got my box drawn. 
And I'm control R a little bit just to rotate to make sure everything's okay. And I got a problem here, and my problem is that this is a little bit higher than the uh, grid, and I want to make it a little bit lower. So let's control Z to get out of this. And let's see if we can lower this entire frame. And the only way I can do that is to, guess what, unfreeze. So let's right click. Let's unfreeze all. Let's control A and let's hit W and bring it down just below that grid. There we go. Let's control R to make sure we're just below that grid. There we go. Now let's freeze it again. So let's Q and let's right click, let's uh, control A to select everything on the screen. Let's right click and hit freeze selection. There we go. Got to have that grid right there. Control R. And now that I have that grid right there, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to get rid of it. So I'm going to hit G because I don't need the grid anymore. Uh, let's get Q to get off of the uh, arc rotate, hit G to get rid of the grid, I don't need it anymore, and now let's draw our box. So come along here, hit create button, hit box, and let's draw the box right here. There we go, good, very good. And let's bring it up a little bit, nice cube, there we go. And there's my box. But what I want to do right now is go ahead and right click on this box, hit Q, right click on the box, and I want to convert it to an edible poly. Cool. And let's control R to rotate around. And uh, let me just show you a trick real quick here. If you want to get rid of the uh, the reference material to be able to basically draw with this without the uh, things getting in the way, just hit Alt Q. And there you have your selection all by itself, and you have the ability now to draw with it. Uh, let's uh, go to this X is out to get back to the reference material. We're going to use this over and over again, so I just want to show you to you right away. Well, now that I've created an edible poly, the first thing I want to do is sham for this, so I get more of a rounded uh, look. So let's come along here and hit my two key to get onto the, excuse me, hit Q to get off of that. Q and hit two to get onto the edge, and let's click on the edge. So what I can do, let's art. It's Alt Z to look in here, and so you can see I've selected this edge right here. Now I want to select all four edges so I can do a nice camfer. And remember from the last series, we actually learned about the ring command. Now one way to get the ring command, you could come over to this menu right here and click on ring. Now I hate doing that because it just takes so much time. You want to do it fast. But there's no shortcut command for it. So you want to go create a shortcut command. Go to Customize. Go to Custom Use Interface. I showed you how to do this last time, but I want to remind you because it's so important to be able to do that rapidly. So from this customized menu, go ahead and hit S when look for select ring. Let's come along here and kind of pan down a little bit. And there's select ring poly, and that's when you want. Now, notice it does have a shortcut command. It has one because I set it. Now, if there's nothing here, uh, I chose shift D. There's no reason for that. Just D kind of looked like I'm ringing around kind of. Uh, I, if, but if you don't have that in there, just go ahead and type in uh, shift D and put it in there and hit assign. I'll assign that to the ring command. I also went ahead and did the loop and for loop I chose uh, shift control D. So now I can hit, now for my shortcuts I can hit uh, ring or loop very rapidly and I'm going to use those commands quite a bit so I want to assign some shortcut keys. Now I would advise only assigning about four or five shortcut key commands off. Uh, so I've got one of my edges selected here. So now that I've set my ring command I can go ahead along here and hit shift D and Control R to take a look and see it's been set. There you go. And it selected all four of the edges. Now I have to do a chamfer that. And remember the command for chamfer is Control Shift C. And when I roll that, there's my chamfer command. Let's chamfer that a little bit and give that a rounded edge. Isn't that nice? Now I can go ahead and hit Alt Q to take a look at what that looks like in the hidden view. That's Control R to rotate around to see it. And you see how nicely all four sides were chamfered. Very good. So let's get out of that. And let's work with the front part of the plane. So control R to spin around to the front. There we go. We're going to Alt Z to move back just a little bit. And I'm going to actually kind of model this part of the plane. So once again, I want to select polygon. So it's one, two, three, four is a polygon. Let's click on that. And what I want to do, I want to go ahead and pull that out and in a sense shrink it. So to pull it out, I want to extrude it. So that's Shift E for extrusion. Extrude it out. And now it hits uh, R for shrink. Shrink that. Okay, and see I'm getting right on the plane. This is so important to have the reference material there. Let's go ahead and shift E again. Let's extrude a little bit more. All right, let's hit R to uh, shrink it. Cool. 
Let's go ahead and do it a little bit more. So let's go and shift E to pull it out a little bit more. And uh, R to shrink. Let's control R to arc rotate to see how we're doing. We've got a little bit more to do, and that's that front nose back there. Let's go ahead and Alt Z to move back a little bit. There we go. Let's go ahead and Shift E. We're going to get that nose point right there. There you go. Going to hit W, R, excuse me, R to shrink. We're getting there. And now that last final piece, we're going to pull out all the way, or at least as far as we can. Let's go ahead and hit uh, Shift E, and let's extrude that out. And let's hit uh, R to bring that down to a nice fine point. Yeah, isn't that great?